Another month passes and here we are, watching what foreign governments are doing with the precious US debt and US stocks. There's no surprise that governments around the world have a serious appetite for US debt, particularly when so much of the world is finding itself to be more risky and often giving very little in return. The question has always been, who will buy the US debt if foreign investors sell? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what has happened with foreign investors. I'm going to get into all the details today, show you all the charts. There's a lot of charts here. In fact, this is going to make your head spin. Let's begin by taking a look at the major foreign holders of treasury securities. As I say every single time, we are looking at the most brand new data. This gives us the numbers from February 2019, but as you can see at the bottom of this chart, it is actually as of April 15th. 15th but the newest numbers of course are from February now what we are looking at here can be found simply by doing a search for major foreign holders of Treasury securities and you could see that directly from the Treasury's own website I have to mention this exact same thing every time even though I always get comments about it now what we're looking at here is the difference between January and February and you can see of course uh, China decided to purchase more Japan decided to purchase more but in general they are selling okay so I'll show you the charts in just a second but this just gives us directly from the source itself and you could look at the difference between one and the other one of the biggest sellers has been Belgium now you can attribute Belgium to other countries as well other institutions It is often said that Belgium and other places even Ireland are being used really as a shell so there's no real way to tell but as far as I'm concerned it doesn't really matter or either they're buying or selling that's really all I'm caring about when you look further down at the bottom you can see the difference between February 2018 and February 2019 and there is a quite a significant drop I think when I totaled it up it was about 170 billion or so based on memory here so that is significant and that tells us that over time there is less interest however domestically they have been purchasing that's really what's happening here more domestic purchases less foreign purchases that's all I really wanted to show you you can see each individual country if you are interested in that I will break down the charts for you here Belgium holdings of US Treasuries you can see a significant decline unlike ones we have seen for years in fact but this just shows you again it could be a shell regardless that was one of the major contributors to the most recent data then you're looking at this the Treasury purchases or sales by foreign central banks and the decline has been significant yes that has been going on for a little while but ever since the area around end of 2018 we've seen consecutive sales that have been taking place at the same time we see that the US dollar is extremely strong so that could be contributing to this all along the way there are other factors geopolitically that are happening but essentially just showing you the data to give you an idea of what's happening China's holdings of US Treasuries ticked up a little bit but as I explained a moment ago you can see from 2013 and on it's basically been downward on average okay and the same thing applies to Japan as well since looks like 2014 they have come down quite a bit but more recent history here since the end of 2018 they have been purchasing more of the US debt and they're probably doing this along with other investors as well as you can see they've been going more into the fixed income type of assets versus all of the different stocks that are available which we have seen a lot of money leaving that brings me to this foreign flows in and out of US stocks 12 month moving average just showing you here the serious decline that has taken place over this period of time of course I have noted this many times before just wanted to show you this because it's all playing into the same thing 200 billion dollars worth in the last year has been leaving and the foreign investors have been doing that and you've looked at 
at the domestic purchases that have picked up. That's really what's happening. I always get the question, well, if somebody's selling, then who's buying? Who's buying? Well, I'm showing you who's buying. So hopefully we don't see those comments this time around. Foreign holdings change in US corporate stocks. I believe the number is 10 consecutive months that this has been happening for. 10 consecutive months. So that just shows us right now the appetite from foreigners is not there. They do not want to buy in. Yes, it's a strong US dollar, but also we have seen the fact that they've been purchasing other investments here at this time. They're holding a lot in cash and they want to keep their money wherever it is. They're not necessarily buying in because we could see even real estate, for example, has been stagnating, not just in the US and Canada and Australia, but other places around the world too. And this wouldn't be a money GPS video without mentioning the global money supply. You're looking at the blue line for that compared to the S&P 500, which is the green line. And lo and behold, they mirror each other so wonderfully. In fact, just recently being tied together at the hip, conjoined twins right now. This goes as of the, you know, right at that point. We can see here, which is the end of December and the Munchkin Massacre had flipped flipped the switch, and then we saw stocks rocketing higher, not just in the US, but of course all around the world. To reiterate the points, which has really contributed a lot to this rise, we have central banks. The central banks have been printing money. I believe it really started with China Central Bank right at this point here. We also had the Federal Reserve that came out, and they decided that it would be appropriate to say, well, you know, we're going to back off of all that talk about tightening that's not going to happen don't worry about it we also saw the pension funds at this point 64 billion dollars worth needed to move into equities at the very end of the year that gave it another boost we also have the computer algorithms the ctas were working very hard throughout this period of time and still are of course this has pushed it up higher and of course everything else i've gotten into i'm not going to repeat myself 100 times even though i always do this just shows you right now what has contributed Contributed to the rise. No, it's not foreign investors loving the fact that this is great. We're going to buy US stocks. Yes, they do own a lot. Look at China. Look at Japan. They each own over a trillion dollars just in US debt. Then you look at all the stocks as well. There is a appetite, but that has been waning in the recent past. And we have to start wondering, as the question I brought up initially is, if foreign investors stop buying and domestic investors stop buying or maybe can't afford to purchase anymore or there's not enough of the appetite for the amount of debt that's there because it continues to pile up who buys it and there's only one answer and of course you know exactly what I'm gonna say and that is the Federal Reserve the Federal Reserve will be the buyer of last resort that's exactly what they will do eventually we will see them printing up money and they will buy up everything and anything in the next cycle they'll probably probably buy just about everything, including stocks. Many have talked about this. They're going to bring rates into the negative. So you're going to see rates that actually go below zero, just like they do in Europe, in Japan. Other places around the world have been playing with this negative interest rates, but you can't necessarily bring it down to, let's say, negative 2% or 4% or 5%. It doesn't really work that way. It just goes just slightly below the zero mark. And then, of course, it tries to spur growth and economic activity. It doesn't work because all of these countries for the most part are suffering, but that's a whole different story. BlackRock had some important points to say, and I wanted to bring them up here and just briefly talk about it. Despite a strong start to 2019, many investors remain underinvested across the world. A record amount of cash is sitting in the sidelines, partly due to a shortage of good assets for investors to buy. That's according to the CEO of BlackRock, and he's suggesting that this is bullish because people have all of this money sitting there and it's just waiting. It's waiting for a good opportunity and then it's going to move into these assets so you're going to see them go even higher. Well I can confirm that they have been investing more into this cash type investments that we've seen previously. All of this was not the case. I mean we saw this huge amount of flow that was moving in especially domestically that was moving into equities and then things changed. We saw that happening of course here but things really don't look good and that 
that's why people are holding off. They're not buying new homes right now because they're worried. It's not just about interest rates and thinking, well, will they go up? Will they go down? I'm going to wait a few months. No, they don't know what's going to happen because of the economy. They're worried about it. There are reasons to be worried right now, but we still have all of the easy money that's out there. And that has made these assets being pushed higher and higher. If you want to know where the inflation is hiding, you don't have to look too much further than the S&P 500 and the like. Well, that's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you are supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. Last but not least, if you want the financial education you weren't taught in school, these two books have everything you need from top to bottom, from A to Z, the foundation history, the asset classes, making money so much more. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to find out about the real economic situation going on in the United States, 6,000 plus stores are closing so far this year. You got to watch it. Click on it and I will see you there.